It's funny, as I was editing this video, my oldest child came in and was like, didn't say anything for a while, I was just watching. And then he like walked out and he's like, that's weird. And I was like, what's weird? He's like, you, you look weird, dude. And, and, and I was like, I, I, I do, I do look like out there. I know, I know exactly how I'm feeling right now. And there is a part of my consciousness that is in that room in San Diego with Summer right now. And I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to make this video. I'm going to do a commentary over the session. Uh, just, I don't know, some people might find it interesting. So, uh, okay, man, let's start this video. Okay, Summer, session's complete. That was really weird. <laughs> wow. It almost was going to make me, like, emotional. Like, I don't know what just happened okay it's 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 okay to be emotional it's yeah what was that like I, what was that i love that was weird it was just love what that was weird yeah i was i was conscious the whole time but i okay i knew i needed to do this so Wow. Yeah, it's a hot day. I'm hanging in the sunshine. You should hit me with the splash gun so I cool down. Won't you come on over? We can party till the sun's down. Baby, let me buy you a drink while we're dancing to blink. I could go for some queen bee. Hello, good morning. Summer. How good are morning. you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Good morning to you. What are you? You're in San Diego, right? Yep. Yeah. Nice. So I see you chose um, a video session. Yes, because I just couldn't with my schedule. I couldn't get out there. I was trying and it was not working. <laughs> That's cool. I love that mirror in the background. Oh, thank That's, you. It looks like yeah. I have a crown on my head, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's That's super cool. Um, so what do you, what do you do in uh, San Diego? Um, actually, right now I'm working for a school district. I'm uh, a SICA, so I work with ed, like I'm an ed specialist. So I'm going okay. to school to be an ed specialist. So working with kids like one on one. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. I prefer one on one myself. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, groups for some reason groups like it's too much for me. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel too overwhelmed. Have you have you ever taken part in any of my group sessions? Is this the first time we've ever? Yeah, it's the first time, and I literally have been watching your videos for a couple over a couple years now. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I've always wanted to do it, and then my life was in a little bit. So when I kind of stumbled across you on YouTube, I just stumbled across you. I was going through a really difficult time in my life. I was um, just getting ready to file for a divorce. Mm -hmm. I've been married for twenty over like 24 years. As I was editing this video and I was listening to Summer's story, uh, she was telling me very personal things about this 24-year marriage, uh, this toxic relationship with this narcissistic police officer who did some really cruel, low-frequency things. He, he was basically just an asshole. Um, so as I'm listening to her tell the story, I'm thinking, I know that she spent the last two years healing from this toxic relationship. And I really think that she's in a great spot right now. So as I'm listening to her tell this story, I'm thinking, man, you don't ever have to tell this story again. I think a lot of us, we have our story and we like to continue to tell our story uh, when we don't have to. In fact, we shouldn't because it's really locking us in to our story, our, our, our low frequency past. And I am a really big believer that we are constantly recreating ourselves. We're recreating ourselves a billion times a second. We're flickering in and out of existence. And the only reason that 
it doesn't feel like that is because we continue to drag our story with us, our 3D bullshit. We keep carrying it with us, and it 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 feels like we are a sum of our past, when actually we are not a sum of our past. We are recreating that being a sum of our past. So I hope that Summer never has to tell this story again, and she can just move on and just write off those last 24 years of that toxic relationship. Now, I know some of you, you're going to be thinking, oh my God, this is spiritual bypassing. Um, well, I, I, I personally think spiritual bypassing is a made up term. Um, now, if you're going to ignore or block out traumatic things that have happened to you in the past, um, that is definitely going to lower your frequency. You are not going to grow from that. But Along with spiritual bypassing, there's also something that nobody talks about, and it's called spiritually dragging your 3D bullshit with you for way too long. And I think that that's a bigger problem on this planet than spiritual bypassing. People keep telling the same story over and over and over, and they wonder why they feel like they're on a hamster wheel experiencing the same thing over and over and over. And I know I have my um, story, parts of my story that I keep telling. Um, I'm doing my best to let go of certain aspects of my story and to move on. Uh, so it, it happens to all of us, but I definitely believe that Summer is ready to move on, never tell that story again. And um, I just want to hear what happened to Summer after this toxic relationship as she started to wake up. Every day I started waking up going, what, what am I doing? Yes, like, yes. what is, and I'm telling you, Casey, I had absolutely no control over what was happening. My soul was awakening and I, I was done and I was out. And it was, it was like the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. It was like two years of just healing a lifetime. It's like, I'm a completely different person. It was, Changing that whole identity of who I was, well, yeah. it was very, very, very painful um, and difficult work. I, that's why that's... I know people don't do it because it. it I was like, sometimes I, I'm not even kidding you. I think I'd like another dive and go through that again because it was yep. so. Yep. It was so. I, I, I really, I, I can't put into words why it was so difficult, but it was a lot of inner work. That well, just, you're shedding like all of this bullshit Programming. you're living yes. a complete lie and when you find yes. out that your whole life yes. is a lie yes. then there's no there's no foundation for you to stand on because everything's yes. who am i what the hell the, it, it, you're you're yes. there's nothing for you to stand on and that's scary you know was. that's that's my, scary yeah my identity was completely ripped away like yeah. i i look back and i realized that i was living it's like I was role playing Casey, like in totally, my freaking totally. life, I was not living a genuine life. Like yeah, I just, it, just was so programmed by the world. Totally. And, and you, not I, only are you not living one life, but you're like faking like several lives. You have yes. a mask with your friends, a mask with your family, a mask with your husband, a mask with your work, the mask with your kids. And that is the opposite of knowing yourself. Okay. All right. I so, will. Um, I'll go for like 25, 30 minutes, and then um, I will let you know when I'm done, and we'll talk for a couple minutes, see if you had any sensations, and uh, yeah, I hope you. I okay. see what happens. Hope you have you a good session. Lay down. Yeah, lay, lay down. Lay yeah. Down? Yep. Okay. Perfect. I'll just lay down. Yep. Perfect. Cool. Okay, I'm going to do a little commentary over this session. Uh, I will let you know the exact second that I have made contact with Summer in San Diego. Done. <laughs> no, I, I'm serious. And, and, and actually, it wasn't then. We, we've, we're always connected. We are always connected at all times. Now, I think that with my clients, there's usually like four levels of connection. And what I mean by that is, first of all, we're all connected uh, in this field of consciousness. 
Um, the second someone starts to watch my videos and resonate with what I'm saying or just my personality or with whatever, that's like a second level of being connected. Uh, the third level would be when they make an appointment. As soon as they make that appointment, the universe knows what's going to happen. The universe knows why they're making the appointment. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons that people start to experience changes as soon as they make the appointment. It's because in the universe's eyes, it's already happened. And then, of course, when uh, Summer and I are talking on the phone, there's like an extra fine-tuning of the connection. So I don't even have to try to connect. I mean, we, we are already connected Right now, I'm just bringing these frequencies in uh, to my hands. I'm imagining summer in front of me. Um, this is the way I usually do distance sessions. For the first nine years, I never used video, so there was nothing for me to look at. So I just imagined the person uh, in front of me, or I imagined myself in their um, room given the session. But now that I've started doing Zoom sessions, which I really enjoy, I do find myself giving the screen a session, which is really funny because I know that <laughs> summer's in San Diego. Um, I don't know, that, but it, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I have noticed that as I was editing this video, there are like two or three times that I kind of get lost playing with the frequencies in my hands, and then I go back to the screen. And as soon as I go back to the screen, her registers, um, her reaction to this session intensifies. So I, I don't know. I thought that was fairly interesting. Uh, right now, I am simply just... I know that she is attuning to these frequencies. I'm looking for some small movement... Uh, maybe in her eyes, uh, maybe just watch her swallow, maybe a small, there we go. I see her eyes start right there. So I know that her body is remembering these frequencies. It's like, in my opinion, her body has been waiting to attune to these frequencies. And being the spiritual cable guy, that is, that's what I do is I tune people to these frequencies. Now, her eyes are definitely um, starting to uh, flutter much more than they were in the beginning. So I know that her, her walls are coming down because I, I do know that when someone first lays down, um, you, know, they're, they're, you know, they're on camera. They're like, well, this dude's looking at me like, what's going on? What am I supposed to feel? He's in Colorado. I'm in wherever. How's this supposed to work? I don't get it. So there's, there's like a little wall, a little tension, uh, not tension, but th there's, there's something preventing them from being completely relaxed. And I, I just know I've been doing this for long enough that after a couple minutes, that wall uh, will come down and they will really start to go deeper and deeper as the session uh, continues. Now, right now, I'm just imagining her, uh, her head between my hands. Um, I've definitely given entire sessions uh, where I was just doing this, especially in the first nine years when I never used video. Announce. Okay, now so this is what I'm talking about. So I come back up and I'm giving her my full attention on the screen. Uh, oh, look, I think this is interesting. I'm backing up from the screen like if she was in person as i back up as i pull away the the feeling in my hands intensifies so i don't know i, th I think it's kind of cute that i back away from the screen to intensify the session like right now i believe i'm looking at her forehead and i'm just seeing if i can make any kind of movement um in her facial expression, maybe make her, you know, uh, forehead, you know, twitch or anything. So I'm just completely focused on 
basically her forehead. And when I mean focused, um, it, it's have you ever looked at one of those uh, 3D images and it doesn't look like an image until you really like spread your awareness. You almost like look at it uh, as you would through your peripheral vision. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. I've, I've, I've spread my consciousness out. Um, I'm, I have very, um, probably no thoughts right now. Uh, and, you know, I, I do get thoughts. Every once in a while, I'll get thoughts in my head uh, about my 3D life. And, you know, I just become conscious that, oh, okay, I need to get back to what I'm doing. So, you know, I'm not like this completely... There are thoughts going through my head. I think my job is to actually just to feel and observe. And that's that's really what I'm doing. I'm just, now watch, I, I'm back to the forehead. I'm going to, I'm just concentrating on her forehead to see, okay, I see a little eye movement there. Um, just concentrating. Actually, I'm not even really concentrating. I'm just observing. And to observe, you don't really have to concentrate. Um, okay, a little eye movement there. So I, I, I know the session's going on. There, there, there's no question. Uh, so th now we're getting some definite more eye fluttering. Um, she's, for some reason, whatever reason, she is going deeper. So I just continue to play with these frequencies and see if I can magnify. Okay, now I'm definitely trying to make something happen. You know, I will say that in the beginning, I was not using my hands and I was just, you know, basically staring at Summer. Um, I've always known, uh, at least when I first learned this work, that the true healing is coming through your eyes. It's not coming through your hands. Of course, you can feel the sensations in your hands stronger um, which is why I'm always using my hands because it feels like ecstasy, uh, th this feeling. But if you also notice, I know I look really, really weird. Um, I never blink. I, I will definitely go 10, 15 minutes without blinking. No problem. Uh, I'm not aware of it until I actually videotape myself and then actually see how crazy I look. Okay, there we go. See, she, she's really starting to to get deep. You see how she's getting the, the twitching in the head, uh, foreheads furrowing, or I'm not sure if that's the right word. Um, so I know she's going deep. Um, I'm probably not having any thoughts right now. I am just uh, observing and just playing with these frequencies. Uh, do you see that big bruise on my hand, my right palm? That is is from a nasty skateboard wreck that I just had about two days earlier. Um, my left hand is mauled. I mean, I ripped so much skin off my left hand. Uh, I was going about 20 miles an hour, uh, hit some wet leaves, and just took, I just landed on my chest. How I didn't hit my head, I have no idea. Um, might have actually been some divine intervention there. Um, but I landed face first on my chest. I don't know how I didn't hit my head, but I am a little bruised up right now. Um, now that I'm editing this video, it's been like five days. My hand's finally starting to, uh, the swelling's gone and scabs are there and it's, it's, it's starting to look pretty good. I'll be, I'll be back to normal in about a week. So, so basically this is what I do for the 30 minutes. I just play with these frequencies and I am completely in antenna mode. I'm just observing. Uh, not many thoughts, but like I said, if I do have some thoughts, I just, you know, I let those go and I just get back to, uh, you know, focusing on, you know, the session that's taking place. Uh, I will say that Oh, back to my friend. I, I got a friend that does this work. He lives in, oh, man, I think it's Belgium. I, I, I completely forgot. But anyway, he did some studies with this Russian scientist on these frequencies. And he, gave, he was giving people a session with his hands, uh, you know, floating his hands over people. And he was looking at the results. And they were actually, they could see the alignment of the chakras 
Uh, they noticed that the, the chakras would fall more into alignment. Uh, they would actually grow, uh, get larger. Uh, they were checking the energy field emitted by the, the, the body, and they found that gaps in the energy field before the session were filling in uh, after this, were filled in after the session. But one thing that was really fascinating is she's, she's definitely going deeper now into this session. But one thing I found fascinating was he, he facilitated some sessions with people where they simply just looked at each other. They looked at each other straight in the eyes for 30 minutes. And actually, from the data, it looked like the sessions where they, he only looked at the people were actually more profound than the ones where he was actually using his hands. Um, I think intuitively I know this. This is why I don't blink. But um, I'm not one of those guys that I just want to sit there and look at someone straight in the eyes for 30 minutes. Uh, I mean, if we're having a conversation, I'm going to look at you right in the eyes. But I, I don't want to do a session that way. And if you do want a session that way, I'm absolutely going to charge you double uh, <laughs> to sit there and look at each other for 30 minutes. Um, I know that sounds weird because I do believe that it might even be more profound uh, just simply using the eyes. But it's not as fun for me. And I would rather you just close your eyes and let me do my thing and um, let the universe sort out uh, what type of healing you're going to have. Um, when, I, when I'm watching this, I really, this is why I say, I'm, obviously, back to, back to summer, she's clearly deep in the session right now. Um, I remember when this first started, and I was having people, and they were like levitating off the table, and I kept telling my friends, I was like, hey, man, I don't know what is going on, but these people were like levitating off the table. And and like nobody believed me because um, I never filmed any of the sessions before. Um, but now, um, to me, it was sacred and I didn't really want to film the sessions. But what I found was once I started filming a couple of the sessions, I think people actually need to see it. Uh, there's one thing to talk about it, but when people actually see it, I think it helps them own that something is really happening, that is, it is out of this world. I mean, we clearly, these frequencies are a tool that we've been giving to speed up our evolution into this shift that we're going to, into this expansion of our consciousness or into this shift into the fourth density, whatever you want to call it. These frequencies are absolutely speeding up that process. Um, and one of the things that I never really talk about in my videos is... I can honestly say, I, I believe this 100% that I've been doing this for 10 years and my sessions now are not any more profound than the very first sessions I ever gave, even before I got trained to do this work. The, every single person that got a session from me, maybe like the first 10 sessions, um, they will never forget those experiences. Um, I don't know. I just find it fascinating that I've been doing this for 10 years and I do not feel like I'm any better at it than I was the very first session I gave, um, which is why I know this is different, which is why I really believe this idea that there are beings, millions of beings on this planet that came pre-wired to anchor this frequency on the planet. And it's almost like we've done all of our training um, in past lives. So we came pre-wired and pre-trained to do this. There's probably a hundred million of these volunteers or these wonders on the planet right now. Each of us have our own gift. Um, this just happens to be my gift or ability to channel these frequencies and to attune people to this frequency that seems to be um, repairing our connection with our higher self. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just playing with these frequencies. I, I do this for 30 minutes. Um, you would think that I would get bored, but time gets really slippery when I do these sessions. I, do I need to do them for 30 minutes? I absolutely do not need to do them for 30 minutes. Sometimes I believe the healing that is supposed to happen happens within the first like 10 seconds of the session, but you can't really charge somebody um, for an hour and then give them a 10 second session and say, okay, man, you're done. The universe took care of you. <laughs> they really need to experience the sensation. So even though it looks like summer is going deeper and deeper and having a stronger experience, I, 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 I believe the healing that she is going to receive from this um, happened right off the bat. It probably happened during our conversation. But maybe there is something to the sensation of the experience that helps her own whatever healing is going to come into her life. And I, I, I do not know what healing that is. I don't direct this. I don't, um, um, I have complete trust that these frequencies, uh, this love and light from the universe knows exactly what to do. It doesn't need my help in uh, doing anything. Um, so, yeah. This is, this is how I give my sessions. Uh, a lot of people ask if I get feedback during the sessions. I really don't. Uh, it's like the frequencies are coming through me and into you. I don't really get much feedback. I mean, I do know that there are practitioners that get messages during the sessions, which they relate to their clients afterwards. Um, but... I don't want to say I never do because sometimes I do get certain feelings like I need to bring something up, maybe something we talked about earlier uh, before the session started, but not really. I, I really don't get too much feedback. Um, I have other things that I mean, like I can pretty much read you when you when you when when I'm around people. I can absolutely feel. Um, how they're doing, if they're in a good mood, a bad mood. I can feel, um, I can just feel things about people. And I, I, I would say before I got reconnected, I had the same feelings, but I would doubt them. Uh, I would doubt if I, I didn't really completely trust my intuition or my instinct about certain things. But now I absolutely trust, like, you know, if I'm around somebody and I get the feeling like this person is uh, really not in alignment with uh, who they, their optimal path, or, if, you know, I just get a really low frequency vibe. Dude, I just, I just like, I just become invisible to them um, in, a, in a certain way. Um, so, yeah, I'm just... I'm just chilling. I'm just feeling these frequencies. Once again, I look absolutely crazy, uh, not blinking. Um, I remember I was in Guatemala and I was telling my children, I was like, I don't think I blink when I give a session. So they didn't believe me. So I hooked up a GoPro and I started giving the GoPro a session. And do you know that I went for 23 minutes before the GoPro ran out of battery? And I never blinked in those 23 minutes. And I was like, wow, man, damn, I might be able to set like the world record. What is the world record for not blinking? And I think I looked it up and it was like 40 minutes, something like that, 43 minutes or something. And I was like, dude, I can break the world record for not blinking. And then I literally never thought about it again. Um, I don't know. Yeah, obviously it's not important to me to hold the world record for not blinking. But... Um, so sh I don't really know. I never know what's happening with my clients. I never know what they're experiencing. I've absolutely had clients that moved nonstop the entire time, and then we got done. And I'm like, so how was that? And they were like, oh, no, I didn't really feel anything. But and I'm thinking, really? Like, wow, that's, that's strange that you didn't feel anything. And like, as you're, as you're watching Summer here, she is 100% conscious. Like her son is upstairs. Like right now I'm shooting a little 
beams of thunderbolt <laughs> into her body. Now you see how I focused again on and, and, and it got really strong. Her like movements got really strong. That is one of the things that, uh, that I don't experience without the Zoom session. So I'm not sure. I mean, they could be doing that and I, I just can't see them on the Zoom session. But um, I can tell you right now that Summer is 100% conscious. Her son is upstairs. And if he was to trip and fall and to start crying, she would be out of this session in a millionth of a second and upstairs to see what's wrong. So she's not like being taken over or anything. Um, this is, she is completely conscious. And she mentions this in the end of the, she mentions this uh, when we're finished with the session that she finds it hard to believe that she was completely conscious during this whole experience. So right now, I don't know, I've been doing this for about 20 minutes. Um, it's time to start winding this down. Um, I, I really know that the healing that she's already, the healing's already happened. This is just for her experience. Um, and another thing that I've, I've learned over these last 10 years, that if there was an emergency in my house and something called my attention away, Say I had to, there was an accident across the street or something, and I had to, and my you know, kids were screaming at me. I could stop this session. I could go over across the street. I could handle what I needed to handle, and I would come back, and Summer's session would, would still be going on. Like, my job is already done. I've repaired that connection that she has with Source, with her higher self, Oversoul, whatever you, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you want to call it, I've already fixed that connection. So my job is actually done. And the only reason I'm still there is because people pay me to be present and observe for 30 minutes. Um, but I could literally walk away and her session would continue. And eventually she would get the feeling that her session was over and she would just stop and get up. Now, I almost, I've stopped speaking with people after the session. Um, and the reason being is because people are usually sometimes out of it. And it seems like I actually interrupted their session. And I mean, I've had many people contact me and said, hey, man, this session lasted two hours or an hour and a half or... And so, I don't know, I just, I just feel like I'm interrupting the session. Like, my job is to make that connection, and once that's done, then you just write it out until you feel like it's over. Um, so, that's why I quit asking people um, how their session was. So, if you've ever seen, if I've had a session with you, and we just hung up, and I did the session, and I did not um, call you back, um, that's what I do. But if you want me to, if you, if you want to talk afterwards, just let me know. And, you know, we'll just, our, our, our pre-talk will be less. And then we can just talk about uh, things afterwards. But I, I, I really, you know, the, the questions I ask afterwards kind of seem meaningless. Like, hey, do you feel any tingling or you see any colors or? Um... Okay, so I think I'm about done. Let's get back to the session. Okay, Summer, session's complete. That was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It almost was gonna make me like emotional. Like, I don't know what just happened. Okay, it's, it's, it's okay to be emotional. It's, yeah. What was that? Like, I, what was that? I, I don't know. Love. It was weird. It was just love. What? That was weird. Yeah. I was, I was conscious the whole time, but I. Okay. I knew I needed to do this. So. Wow. That was. 
that was actually you interacting with your higher self. Well, it's amazing because I, I really was wanting to see you in person because I was thinking I wasn't going to get the full experience. Uh-huh. But um, apparently I did because actually I was laying there and I was just like, am I supposed to start feeling something? But all of a sudden your body just starts doing that by itself. Like you yeah. have no control over that. Yeah. It's weird. It's, um, but the, what, I don't think what people understand is um, you're completely conscious. If somebody would have oh, knocked. Yes. Yeah, if, if there was like a fire or something, dude, you would have been out of that. You would have stood up. Where's my yes. kids? Like, there's no yes. like, oh, I'm being taken over. No, it's it's totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I could hear my son upstairs. I told him that I was in a meeting. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I could yeah. hear him, but I was still like, oh, God, don't come down here. Because I'm like, my <laughs> body's like doing this. So, so yeah, that's, that was so weird and crazy actually yeah. like i don't even know what to think i have like this emotional thing going on right now i'm gonna feel it. really good Thank i got a group so session i got a group session this weekend saturday oh, and okay. sunday okay They're, i shouldn't even call them group sessions okay i what i should say is hey i'm doing a session for you this weekend lay okay. down participate so what time i don't know uh go to my site um okay i'll go to your site Go to the sessions page, go to the monthly group, tune up, okay. and there's two times. Okay. Um, so I'll meet you in the field this weekend. And, and I awesome. swear, you're going to think, we're not going to talk. We're not going to do anything. Right. When you lay down, I, I will not be surprised if the same exact thing happens. Um, it, it, it's crazy. literally a session for you. Okay. So, okay. Okay, I'll do it. I'll go do it. All right. Peace, peace, take care. Yeah, peace. Bye. Peace. Peace. It's getting kind of crazy up in here Got that DJ playing music Everybody wants to hear, yeah It's getting kind of crazy up in here Everybody wants to ride